Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning all about the first part of cell organelles. We'll start with the nucleus. The nucleus has five different parts. The nuclear membrane, the nuclear pores in the membrane, the nucleolus, the chromatin, which is the DNA tightly coiled up, and the nucleoplasm. We'll start by talking with the nucleus. The nucleus is the dark center of the cell. It stores the genetic information that you got from your mom and your dad. And it controls everything that happens in the cell. And it does this by telling the cell which proteins to make. And that process is called protein synthesis. The nucleus also controls cell division. The nucleolus, on the other hand, is sometimes confused with the nucleus. But the nucleolus is the dark center inside of the nucleus. It doesn't have a membrane, and it's basically made up of RNA. And the RNA, ribosomal RNA, makes ribosomes. So the nucleolus makes ribosomes. The nuclear membrane, or nuclear envelope, has very specialized pores. These pores are quite large for the nucleus, but they only allow in proteins and RNA. And the same for leaving the nucleus, proteins and RNA only. And that helps just to protect the nucleus. Chromatin is densely coiled DNA. And because there is such a massive amount of DNA inside every cell in your bodies, it has to be coiled and wrapped up. And the cell does this by wrapping the DNA up around histone proteins, which is what these gray balls are representing here. Now, if you look down at the bottom here, you'll see this DNA that gets spun up, wrapped around these blue histone proteins, and all of those wrapped up pieces get coiled up, then twisted, and further wrapped and twisted and coiled until ultimately you end up with this X-shaped chromosome during mitosis. And I'm sure you'll recognize that when you think of DNA. DNA's job is that it contains the blueprint for all of the proteins in your body. So DNA has the blueprint for what color your eyes are going to be and the blueprint for how curly your hair is going to be. It also has the blueprint for all of the enzymes that you need to digest your food and the hormones like insulin that you need to store your sugar. Next we'll talk about the nucleoplasm. The nucleoplasm is basically just the jelly-like cytoplasm that's inside the nucleus. It's very watery and what it does is it supports all of the chromatin and the nucleolus and all of the proteins and enzymes that are sitting inside the nucleus. If you look at this picture, you'll see that this is the nucleus and this is the nucleolus of an animal cell. Next, we'll talk about the mitochondria here in this picture. The mitochondria is quite easy to recognize. It almost looks like a swimming pool. The mitochondria is the furnace of the cell. It makes all the energy that your body needs to do the things that you do daily. It has two membranes. The inner membrane is called the cristae, and it's quite folded up and wrapped up, you'll see it's quite twisty. And that just provides a lot of surface area for all the reactions that occur across the cristae. Now what is the reaction that happens across the cristae? That is cellular respiration and you should remember that from Science 10. And what the mitochondria does is it converts the chemical energy that we eat, which is sugar, and it converts that into ATP. This is an electron micrograph picture of a mitochondria and you can clearly see the cristae. It's very easy to recognize. Now mitochondria perform cellular respiration. So what is that? It takes sugar, which is C6H12O6 glucose. So that's what we eat. And we join that with what we breathe, which is oxygen. O2 
the mitochondria turns those two compounds into carbon dioxide, water, and the whole point to doing that is that we are creating ATP energy. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and it's a molecule that helps to carry energy around the body. Next we'll talk about ribosomes. A ribosome is a very small organelle. It doesn't have a double layered membrane it's made by the nucleolus, which we already know, and it's made up of rRNA and proteins. Now what ribosomes do is they make proteins. So the nucleolus makes ribosomes and the ribosomes make proteins. And as they're making proteins, they make sure that the amino acids are in the correct order, the order they need to be in order for the proteins to do their job. Here's a really great picture of a ribosome making a protein. You can see these big green blobs are part of the ribosome. Now ribosomes always have a large part and a small part. This long chain here is the mRNA, which is basically just a copy of DNA that comes from the nucleus. This here is the amino acid chain. And what the ribosome's doing is it's turning the code from the mRNA to make sure that the amino acids th are joined up in the proper order. This chain of amino acids is called a protein. Now quite often ribosomes are found attached to the rough ER. And when they are attached to the rough ER, what they're doing is making proteins that can be easily sent outside of the cell or exported from the cell. When the cell is making proteins that need to be sent into the digestive system or sent into the immune system or even sent into the blood, then you'll find those ribosomes attached to the rough ER. Now some ribosomes are just free floating in the cytoplasm and many times they'll be joined together in a chain and when they're joined together in a chain like this picture, we call it a polysome. Now what a polysome does is it makes many, many copies of the same protein. And the reason that it does this is because it is always creating proteins that are being needed inside the cell. And many times you'll need a lot of copies of those proteins. So if your cell needs many copies of a protein that will, for example, help create new copies of DNA, then the polysome ribosomes will be making that protein. Here's a picture of many polysomes inside the cytoplasm of a cell. This is an electron micrograph picture. Make sure you can recognize it. So make sure you think about your hot questions and we'll see you in class. <laughs>